Hi everybody, my name is Jacob from Quantum Training and this is my first English video. So I'm gonna walk through a full workout. So we're gonna do back, mostly the lats and bicep and rear delt. So I'm gonna explain every detail to you. So let's go. So it's my second week back to the gym. We're gonna add volume slowly, week to week. So last week we just did uh, only one working set. So uh, we're gonna do two working set this week and we're gonna tape up in the next uh, few weeks. So when I do like a uh, it style workout, like one set all out, I usually put uh, like more activation exercise at, at first. So when you want to maximize uh, muscle tension in a, in a specific muscle like the lats, we need to understand anatomy and we need to understand force application. So we need to understand that the lats main function is to shoulder extension and also to depre depress the scapula. To make sure that when we do an exercise for the lats, we're gonna bring the elbow to the waist to fully shorten that, uh, that lat muscle. So we need to understand also that we have horizontal fiber and more vertical fiber. So when you do an extension and you bring the elbow down, you're gonna focus more on the, um, the vertical uh, portion. So we call it the, the lower lats if you, if you like. So many people need more lower lats, so the vertical fiber. So uh, this workout will really focus on those more oblique and vertical fiber of the lats. So we start with the straight arm pull down. We're gonna do three sets of 10 with two second contraction. And we're gonna focus to bring the elbow to the waist for maximal uh, lats recruitment. As you see, I engage the lat first, so I depress the scapula and then I do the motion. It's not ideal when you do a big compound exercise, so more heavy stuff, but when you do stuff like uh, isolation work and uh, activation work, it's really good to do that in two motion and gradually incorporate in a more integrated movement. So, uh, so, and also I try to shove my elbow to my waist all the time, and then I squeeze a good two seconds. So for my output exercise, I will do the seated row machine. You can do on a regular seated row also. So quick tips on how to maximize the lat recruitment when you do a seated row. You need first to have a good setup. So when you wanna work the lower fiber of your lats, or the lower lats, you wanna make sure that the, la the line of pull of the fiber are in line of the tension that you, you provide. So. If I'm like this, there's more horizontal, horizontal fiber that are on, in line with the force. And if I want to recruit the more lower and oblique fiber, I will need to have a slight forward lean like this. And with the, the, the row, I'm gonna use a neutral grip to bring the elbow down to the, my waist. I'm gonna do like this. More of my oblique and lower fiber are in line. So that's the, the range of motion. If I go past that, I'm gonna retract my scap and the lower fiber are gonna stretch. We also need to assess the trainable range of motion. So if I want to recruit the lat, I wanna bring my elbows to my waist. That's my range of motion. If I go past that, we can see that the line of pull is in this way and it's not in line with the lower fiber of the lats. So you need to use a trainable range of motion if you want to maximize muscle growth in the lower fiber of the lats. So my main focus when I'm doing the row is to bring my elbows down. As you can see here, we have the Prime Fitness at the Quantum Gym. Prime Fitness seated row. The good thing about the Prime Fitness machine is that you can put your weight where you want and uh, challenge a different portion in the resistance profiles. As we know, when you row, most of the exercises are lighter to heavier. There's no tension there, there's a lot of tension there. And as we know also, the strength profile of the lats, stronger there and weaker there. So the strength profile and the resistance profile don't match. Uh, that's why we see a lot of uh, compensation when we're doing stuff like seated row. The, the main thing we can do with this machine is overload the lengthened position of the range of motion and deload at the end. So we can match the strength profile of the lats. So we need to make sure with this kind of machine that we want to have heavy there, heavy to light. We don't want to have heavy to nothing, a slight deload. And we also uh, need to consider that when you reach failure and fatigue, the strength profile of the pulling muscle will change also. So maybe the first set, you will be stronger in the short position so we can put uh, like 75% of the weight on the lengthened position and the other on the mid-range position that also challenge the short range 
and after we can do like two sets only in the lengthened position. But for today, we're gonna do two sets, one set of eight to failure, and we're gonna do a back off set of 10. So I'm gonna put all the plate in the lengthened position for that one to really challenge that portion of the range. And it will have a slight deload at the end. It will still be challenging, but not as much as see the rule. But that's one thing you need to consider when you're programming your workout, is that you want to challenge all the portion of the, the resistance profiles. Uh, so here we're gonna challenge mostly the lengthened position and the mid range. And after we're gonna do an exercise that challenge the more short position. So I'm gonna do a couple set of warm up and then one set all out and then a back up set. So that was my failure set. So the thing you want to consider when you do a uh, set to failure is one you want to reach most of the time uh, range of motion failure. So, so now we're going to do the back off set. I'm going to strip half the weight and then we're going to do 10 reps. Really control, really squeeze. So the first set was really allowed to recruit the um, uh, most uh, motor unit. And now we're going to uh, go a little bit lighter and fatigue those uh, motor units. So, so now we're gonna go with the dumbbell row. Uh, the dumbbell row is a more integrated movement. So you're gonna have lats, mostly the horizontal fiber. So more in the upper region of the lats. You will have upper backs. You will have a little bit of rear delts. Um, so the intention there is to bring the elbows back as, you, as far as you can. And also, if you really look at the programming today, the more stuff you can use uh, other muscle, like the dumbbell row, you can use a lot of trunk muscle to to rotate, to lift more weight. I tend to put them uh, later in the workout because these are good exercise, but sometimes uh, your ego gets get in the way and you use a lot of weight with a lot of momentum. We know that momentum isn't itself bad, but it's uh, mostly used incorrectly in the gym. So uh, you can have a little bit of momentum to go past failure. Putting it in, uh, in third position in, the, in your workout, if you do like T-bar row, bent over rows, one arm dumbbell row, you will put more tension in the working muscle and hypertrophy, gaining mass. It's all about tension in the working muscle. Yeah, you can get big with bent over rows like, uh, like Ronnie Coleman did, but you are not Ronnie Coleman and you don't have his genetics. So uh, we cannot look at the 1% of the best in the world and, and go, I'm gonna do like him. Because, well, he's there because it's, the 1% in the world. So if you are uh, more average, like I am, like most of the people, uh, when it comes to building muscle, well, you have to work smarter. And quantum tra training, that's what all we are about. Working smarter, not harder. But if you work smarter and harder, it's the, the best thing. So with the dumbbell rule, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna have one top set and one back up set. So it's more like upper back focus. So that's why we wanna do like two main exercises, one being more for the lats, and the other one being more for the upper back. You can't have like just upper back and just lats. You are go, going to have a mix of both, but you can put like more focus on, on one. So I'm gonna do like one warm up, warm up set and then do the top. With the one arm dumbbell row, you wanna have your body parallel to the ground mostly. You can have a slight incline. As you see, my elbows is running at like a 45 degree angle. It's for most people that will be a sweet spot for uh, like a lot of muscle tension, uh, internal muscle tension, and a lot of load also. For the dumbbell row, I want to have uh, the elbow at 45 degree because I want to integrate horizontal fiber of the lats and upper back. If you go like to 90 degree, you will have uh, less lats and more upper back, but your weight is going to go down. It's not a bad thing or a good thing. So uh, if you want to really have more isolation exercise for the upper back, the elbow out is, is really going to challenge that. But uh, yeah, for now, we're going to do like a, a more integrated movement and we're going to do the top set right now. So as you can see, I use a little bit of momentum at the end. So I reached my eight reps trick, and then to go past failure, I'm gonna use a little bit of momentum. So that's, that's one of the way you can use momentum to just go past failure. So now we're gonna go to the more metabolic phase of the workout. 
You want to do a chest supported lat pull down. It's a really good exercise to line up the oblique and lower fiber of the latissimus dorsi, the lat muscle. So I'm going to use a neutral grip, a medium grip. Uh, maybe I can explain why in a later video. But you want to have the chest supported, a lot of support. Uh, the more you, you have support, the more, the more you can uh, have output in your exercise. So, so as for the lats, I'm going to roll and I'm going to try to shove my elbow to my waist. For this exercise, we're going to do four sets of 10 reps with a good one to two seconds in the short position. Uh, it will have more metabolic effect. That's the goal of this exercise. And we're going to go with shortest uh, rest pause. We're going to have 60 to 75 uh, seconds of rest. The other big exercise, my main output exercise, I, I add uh, between two and three minutes uh, between them. So back's done for today. Uh, it mo was mostly lats. So in three days, I'm going to do another back workout, mostly upper back with a little bit of lats. So we're going to go to the rear delt. If you look at the, the, the fiber alignment of the rear delt, uh, most person would do like that kind of like reverse pec deck style. But if you look at the, the fiber lineup, it's more a downward position. So if you were just to try to contract your rear delt, if you go down just a little bit, you will feel it more better. With that being said, we're gonna have this kind of range of motion and not that one to really put more tension on those fibers. So we're gonna do the eye cable reverse style fly. Four sets of 10 with two second pause at, in the contracted position. And last set, we're gonna add a partial range of motion uh, in more of the lengthened position. So we're gonna finish with a bicep superset. We're gonna do the first exercise, the elbow in the front, and uh, it will uh, load in a more short position of the bicep. And we're gonna do a behind the body curl, who load mostly through all the range of motion. So, so when you do a superset, you wanna uh, look at different things. One of them is uh, do they overlaps in the resistance profile. So you don't want to have a, an ex a two, two exercise that uh, work only the short range of the muscle. You, you can, it's a more metabolic style superset, but if you want to maximize hypertrophy, you wanna take different part of the resistance profiles. So that's why we're gonna do a short range uh, exercise first, and then we're gonna do a more complete uh, range of motion. One of the thing I like uh, to work with the, the bicep is a lot of cable work. If you look at someone uh, anatomical, if you look like just me, my elbows are pointing outward, not uh, down. So if I'm doing a curl like this, and if I'm using a, dumb, a dumbbell, the force is, uh, the gravity is on the dumbbell, my body is working against this movement and not that movement. It's good, but not as good as if you can line up the joint with the tension. So when you do the cable, but you can do like the elbows are really in a good place for me, and I can do the exercise with the tension directly on the working muscle. So that was one of the main advantage to work with uh, cable for the bicep. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the first English video. Don't forget to subscribe and like the YouTube video. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and we also have a podcast, the Quantum Podcast. And if you would like to work with us to take your physique at the next level, just email us at info at quantumtraining.ca. Have a good day.